Hello, welcome, welcome to the Biomedical Engineering News Podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas A. Casado. So grateful to be here. It's a Sunday, August 15th, 2021. We've got a fun lineup for today. I'm going to keep it very... We're going to learn a lot today. You and me, we're going to do some research. Because I want to start off with try to find a... I'm trying to think of an art idea. Just putting it out there. I want to make an NFT about veggies. You know, the genealogy of veggies. And, and the lineage and how... You know, all these veggies are connected. Basically, you're everybody's eating the same veggies. You know, it's all, it doesn't matter if you're eating broccoli or cauliflower, or, you know, um, they all have the same heritage. All right, next up, we got AirPod Diagnosis. This is uh, pretty interesting. Straight from Apple's machine learning lab. Might be our abstract of the day, we'll see. Ooh. Why does it say lower back stretches? It shouldn't say lower back stretches, but we're gonna ignore that. And we're gonna talk about, oh, I guess, huh. All right, so we're gonna do 10, um, improve your health, posture and focus with these must have health gadgets. Yeah, we're gonna fit that in there. Which includes stretching your lower back. Yes. Okay, cool. More stretching. Yeah, we're going to squeeze that right in there. And after that, we're going to do, um, we're going to do, what is God and quantum mechanics and consciousness have to do uh, with each other? And hopefully we'll figure that all out with our biohack of the day. That means breathing, breathing breath hacks. So we're gonna get some breath, breath biohack gadgets. All right, so stay tuned. Let's get right into the next segment. All right. Well, not this one, but let's talk about veggies. And I saw this article pop right up. And I was like, huh, what was this vegetable that could help us prevent the next pandemic? I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Um, well, it could be anything. I mean, you could find a superfood out of superfood, right? Superfood out of anything. Um, but in 2002... When this article journalist was working at the Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Program at the CDC, um, he noticed that in China, the price of garlic, which is viewed as a cure-all by many Asian cultures, had risen tenfold. Okay? And this was at the first sign of SARS, which is basically a predecessor of COVID. And they spot five months before China revealed that it was expected an outbreak of this new respiratory coronavirus. Um, and then again, in late 2019, satellite images from China show cars were heading to hospitals more often than usual. And then 2020, the price of garlic rose again. And these were the, among the early signs of COVID-19. So, like, there was some, there was some reports about people knowing that there was a pandemic or an epidemic going on, you know, in China um, before COVID happened. You know, there was people getting their temperatures taken at airports and, you know, regular health conscious. Um, so, I mean, this, we you could just study the price of garlic and maybe predict, um, lot of this um, but early 2020 garlic prices rose and then we see the sign of a new outbreak before people getting sick so this is an early warning um, that we need to take attention to so in short an immune system for the plant a network of tools that search 
for signs of new infection, direct, directly detect and analyze new pathogens right when they appear, and identify, develop, and ideally deploy effective therapies. That's the natural response, all right? That is the natural response. Can we flip this? Here we go. You see the garlic on the screen. If you're watching live on YouTube or Twitch, um, that's what, that's a beautiful looking piece of garlic. So maybe I'll save it. I'll, s I'll do it later. But I've been loving botanical drawings. I've always wanted to do botanical um, stencils and do, you know, layers and spray paint these things in large scale. And I've thought about it so much, but I just haven't done the time. But, um, all right, so the immune system would continue to rely on tools such as monitoring demand and prices for medical therapies, as well as satellite images for traffic patterns and step up our efforts to monitor public sewers as, as pathogens first. So these are, this article is going into all sorts of ways we can detect, you know, but predict. Um, so it's a garlic supercomputer predicting pandemic. That's what they're calling it. And, you know, biosensors that could detect pathogens. Hmm. The super can be computer could scan libraries of existing treatments that might help fight it. I mean, I think it's all good, but I don't really understand what they're trying to get at. All right, so they they're jumping around. Yeah, all right, here we go. In, in this inverse.com, they're talking about several U.S. states are trying so-called cloud seeding, in which they add small particles of sil silver iodide to clouds to boost rainfall. Most Americans drink water with iodide fluoride, and cereal grain products are often enriched with folate. Oh, they, they were saying to distribute treatments quickly and um, equitably, it may one day be more efficient to add them to rain or drinking water, along with chemicals to time limit the therapy. Wow. This is, this is great. All right. Uh, these automated solutions take humans out of the loop. In the case of COVID, could exponentially reduce the time it takes to migrate a bio threat, thus saving lives, property, and uh, national economies. All right, this was a little bit of a waste of time, but I do like the idea of um, it was in, uh, originally in Noble Noble Magazine, independent journalistic endeavor from annual reviews. Never heard of this Noble Magazine. Do wild animals get PTSD? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's just jump right ahead to what I was thinking. I, I was looking at, I, I was Googling diagrams of like how, is there something I can just print, maybe combine some botanical drawings? And I know, hmm, maybe I can pull it up. I know there's a, a famous, um, Famous research done by, um, who did Wild Fed? Wild Fed podcast. Uh, Wild Fed. Hmm. Thanks for, yep. Daniel Vitalis. Let me see if I can find this um, quote by him. But basically it says, all plants originate from the same origin. And it would be great to hear it. Okay, how to feed your human they're all variations of the same plant species. Yep, here we go. 
I hope this is good. The average person is eating something like, the average American's eating something like 30 plants in a year, 30 species in a year. And this pales against, and you'll hear more about this as the show goes on, but this pales against not just ancestral peoples, but even modern hunter-gatherers who eat far more plant diversity. And we're going to be looking at the impacts of that, not just on how it affects vitamins, not just how it affects minerals that make it into our body, but also medicines and even genetic material, which may play into our own gene expression and how important that is as well. I think this is going to be a really valuable conversation. Especially All right, you heard it there. People only eat about 30 species. And as you can see from this diagram, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, they're all from the species of Brassicia olenacea. Olenacea, yeah. Um, yeah. The cabbage is the selection from the terminal buds. The Brussels sprouts are selection from lateral buds. The kohlrabi is the selection from the stem. The kale is the selection from leaves. And broccoli selection from stems and flowers. And then cauliflower is the selection from flower clusters. It's all that same plant. And we're just picking it apart. Which is fine. But I think there isn't enough education about this. So if we can have... A food diagram that shows the species and and all these different types of um, genealogies I'm I'm in it and I'm gonna sell it as an NFT so I'll market it here first but um it got me onto this great article and it's all about broccoli and that's that's the same food that is uh, broccoli's plural for of broccolo, which means the flowering crest of a cabbage. And broccoli has a large cluster of flowers. It's referred to as the head of broccoli. And they're usually green in color and ranged in like tree like structure and we we love broccoli, I don't know. They say broccoli is the, probably the healthiest food out there. It's one of the best known cruciferous vegetables and enjoyed worldwide in many different kinds of cuisine often boiled, steamed, or often eaten raw. There's that one fact that goes around. They say there's more protein in broccoli per mass um, than a whole thing of steak. And I don't know. I mean, it's not, you need all the essential amino acids to make it bioavailable, but whew. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into these 11 health benefits of broccoli. We need some clapping or something. You get All right, that's what you got. You got bow. And um, one, it's excellent source of vitamins. So vitamin C, K, B1, B2, folate helpful for women during preconception and pregnancy uh, it's packed with essential minerals so minerals such as sodium potassium calcium magnesium chloride pota what's the p phosphorus chlorine uh, sulfur trace elements such as iron zinc copper magnesium selenium yeah, I guess this essential minerals could just be any element in its natural state, right? Never really, really thought about the what is a mineral. You know, I just bought, I told you last week about Kinton. And been drinking that. It's been good. No, nothing really new to report, but it's a nice benefit. It's like drinking seawater. It really is, so... Um, Broccoli is also rich in isothiocyanates, ITCS, uh, which is a source of 
glucosinolinates, and the bioactive degradation products, um, which uh, significantly suppresses the NF-kappa B signaling system, which is a key trigger our inflammatory response. And they've been especially effective in fighting lung and esophageal cancers. And they say studies show the risk of other cancers of gastrointestinal tract and respiratory tract can be also reduced by uh, consuming broccoli. So, yeah, that's awesome. Reduce inflammation. Look at this graph. Look at all the molecules. All right. Those are all glucose and linates in broccoli. It's a special source of omega-3 fatty acids for vegetarians. Excellent source of antioxidants. Preventing cancer, we just talked about that. Um, there are studies testing rats by introducing a carcinogen. That ha rats had consumed broccoli for several days prior had 50% less occurrence of cancer rate. Pretty cool. We have anti-inflammatory. Hold on, let me just check the stream. I want to see how we're doing. I hope somebody's talking. Anybody chatting in the chats? All right, ask your viewers a question. Yeah, so once again, we're live. Feel free. I haven't set up the phone again, but we got 28 subscribers, so if you're out there, join us in the chats. Not a regular schedule yet, but maybe Sundays. Sunday afternoons at 5, all right? Be a weekly recap. Cool. And everything looks good. All right. Anti-inflammatory, improving bone health, great for your health, increased digestive health, it's great for your skin and hair. You get it. Side effects, but well you can eat too much broccoli, guys. There's a side effect to that. Uh, the most common side effect is gas or bowel irritation, which is caused by broccoli's high amounts of fiber. In some people, contact with broccoli can cause an allergic rash. Um... Broccoli is once known as Italian asparagus. It's a funny, it's a funny. Oh, you you mean Italian asparagus? You know broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So also right because it is the flowers, the broccoli's heads will bloom into a bunch of yellow flowers if it's not harvested. So. You're eating those little flower buds. And I don't know if you've ever had a flowered. Yeah, I've seen some broccoli. It's already blooming. And I've eaten it. I don't think it matters. All right, let's move on. I think we had some fun there. Oh man, okay, I completely forgot about all these stuff. So I found a great website called vegetablefacts.net. Great. Look at all this vegetable history of cucumbers. So this is what I'm going to do to try to develop this, um, you know, this, this art. So this is a great picture also. Let me get out of the way. And you can see that lima beans, tomatoes, corn, green string beans all come from South America. And potatoes too. Yeah, squash, sweet potato, pumpkins, peppers, all from South America. I just bought some okra today. That's from Africa. You got radish, beets, celery from the Middle East. You know, we don't think about this. India has eggplants and cucumbers. It's so funny to see all these, you know, New, New Zealand is the home to, oh wait, there's a different type of spinach, because spinach also comes from the Middle East. 
horseradish from Russia and dive. You know, I was riding my bike home today and I somebody said something behind me as I was dry I had my headphones on, he said something fell out of your book bag. And I was so upset when I got home because I, I thought he would I didn't know what he was saying, but yeah. Yeah. I lost my arugula. It's a bummer. Alright, let's let's officially move on. This is gonna be our it's gonna be our abstract of the day. Abstract. Abstract. This is our abstract of the day. Alright. From Apple's Machine Learning Research Institute, we have estimating respiratory rate from breathe audio obtained through wearable microphones. That's right, your air iPods AirPods are gonna be your doctor one day and it's all gonna be automatic. Or maybe it'll be used against you. I'm not sure. But, um, huh, there's a publication. Yeah, let's just read this. All right. Respiratory rate is a clinical metric used to assess overall health and physical fitness. An individual respiratory rate can change due to normal activities like physical exhortation during exercise or due to chronic acute illness. Remote estimation of RR offers a cost-effective method to track disease progression in cardiorespiratory fitness over time. This work investigates a model-driven approach to estimate respiratory uh, rate from short audio segments attained after physical exertion in heavy adults. Data was collected from 21 individuals using microphone-enabled near-field headphones before, during, and after strenuous exercise. Respiratory rate was manually annotated by counting audibly perceived inhalations and exhalations. A short task, long short-term memory uh, network with convolutional layers was implemented to process Mel filter bank energies, estimate rest respiratory rate in varying background noise conditions, and predict heavy breathing greater than 25 minutes per breaths per minute. The multitask model performs both classification and regression tasks and leverages a mixture of loss functions. It has observed that RR respiratory rate can be estimated using with a cor concordance correlation coefficient of 0 0.76 and a mean square error of 0 0.2, demonstrating that audio can be a viable signal for passively estimating respiratory rate. Yeah, I mean, yeah, here it is, respiratory rate, clinical metro, yep, and let's look at some pictures, um, one trial included four recording types, before working out, stretching, cool down, okay, and then this is the graphs, minute and workout, minute and Let's look at this uh, convolution network, audio, feature extraction, recurrent neural network, embedded layers, classifier heavy breathing, regressor, ref respiration rate, classifiers noise. Cool. Yeah, I think that was good. There's a lot we could say about it, but I'm going to stick to the next. All right. We love gadgets, don't we? This is a biomedical engineering, and we want to improve your health, posture, and focus with these must-have health gadgets and accessories. I think there's 10 of it, and there's one right here, which is actually really good. I don't even know. I've seen it at a chiropractor's office. And it is the foam arc professional Pilates. It's a Pilates arc. I've never tried it before, but it looks comfortable. You can lay on it, do a back bend. Um, $260. All right, number two wear a comfortable Magna Belt self healing, he self heating therapy belt for relief from back pain, herniated disc, and sciatica. Yeah, so it's a 
heat belt. Wear underneath your clothes. Support your spine. It's 30 bucks. Pretty good deal. Alright, this is a get up assist movement reminder. It notifies you to get up and stretch. And this health gadget helps break sedimentary behavior. So if your job involves sitting all day, you need a get up assistant movement reminder. And this accessory clips to your desk and gently vibrates every now and then to remind you to stand up and stretch. Additionally, it'll help you know when you've stood for an adequate amount of time. So it's one of our favorite health gadgets. That's what they, they're saying. And it's a Kickstarter thing for about 50 bucks. I don't know. A timer. I, maybe there should be... I mean, there's probably some sensors in it to know if you've gotten up. And, all right, treat yourself to a body massage with the Therabody Wave Duo Smart Roller. Minimize soreness and can you even improve flexibility? So it's a, it's like a rolling ball. It's lightweight. It's a smart roller. High traction grooves. I don't know how it's smart. It looks like there's a button on there. Um... Yeah, I've rolled out my back for, you know, post-workouts or just a stretch. And yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that, um, I'm not sure what their, their body wave duo. Maybe it's a, generate some wave signals. All right, this is the Ergo Posture Pro, powerful posture support. Yeah, more sitting down, working on your posture. It's uh, basically a wearable that relieves stress and tension on your neck. It doesn't just hold your body upright, but it provides permanent changes for undeniable improvements. It's definitely one of the best health gadgets and accessories. It's like a like a it's like a gun harness, <laughs> like under the jacket. Yeah. All right. Reduce muscle tension with their by Wave Solo Smart Vibration Therapy Device. It offers pinpoint vibration with three different fre frequencies for customized use. Yeah. Intelligently focuses on areas. This guy's got his arm underneath it. Looks like the other thing, the rolling ball. All right. They've got the Juve Red Infrared Light Series. It's number seven. We know about the Juve. Very big. Very big. Can not imagine just standing in front of it like this guy? It's like $545. Number eight, towel patch wellness device. This safe, wearable, improves balance, posture, and flexibility. Balances your neuro nervous system. Non-chemical, environmentally friendly solution to improving your mental well-being and posture, focus, sleep, metabolism. It's uh, two hundred forty nine dollars. It's a wellness patch. All right, last two. Home band audio bedtime headband helps you drift off quickly. Wearing a headband to sleep. Ooh. All right, it's comfortable headband plays hypnotic stories, meditations, relaxing sounds, white noises, and more. In fact, there are over a hundred hour hours of audio contact. Content updated regularly. Buy this bedtime headband for eighty dollars. Transform your bedroom, your bedroom atmosphere with Aromo Aromeo Sense. This smart light wakes you up with a sunrise like alarm. I don't know how they went to sleep so quickly. They were doing back stuff and now they're Yeah. That's kinda of cool. Uses a combination of aroma, light, and sound therapy to create a relaxing atmosphere for sleep or focus. Moreover, it supports over a thousand light effects as well as energizing music to suit your every mood. That's pretty cool. All right, let's move on. All right, let's just fly. Oh, I'm not even clicking through these things. We went to the veggie map. We went to the AirPod. There you go. Lower back. Now we're at con God and Quantum Mechanics. Whew. How do these two even, you know, fit together? Well, thanks to Scientific American, we're going to find out. 
Um, it's pretty wordy. John Horgan, he directs the Center of Science Science Writing at the Stevens Institute of Technology. He's got a couple books: the End of Science, the End of War, Mind Body Problems. Yeah. This is his thing. He was in his 20s. He asked his friend, who's brilliant, charming, Ivy educated, and rich, heir to a family fortune, and call him Gallagher. Uh, he could do anything he wanted. You know, and nothing was good enough for him. He could never find love for the same reason. He was disparaged his friend's choices so much for that he alienated us. He ended up bitter and alone. At least that's my guess. I haven't spoke to Gallagher in decades. There's such thing as being too picky, especially when it comes to things with work, love, and nourishment. That's the lesson he learned from Gallagher. Um, some people confuse agnosticism with apathy. So agnosticism, not caring, with apathy, or agnosticism, not knowing, with apathy, not caring. And Francis Collins who's a geneticist that directs the National Institute of Health. He's a devout Christian who believes that Jesus performed miracles, died for our sins, and rose from the dead. In his 2006 bestseller, The Language of God, Collins calls agnosticism a cop-out. When I interviewed him, I told him I'm an agnostic and objected to to cop-out. Collins apologized, and that's when it was a put-down that I should not apply to earnest agnostics who have considered the evidence and still can't find an answer. He said, I was reacting to the agnosticism I see in the scientific community, which has not been arrived at by careful examination of the evidence. I have examined the evidence for Christianity. I find it unconvincing. That's this guy. I have examined, um, I have not been convinced by any scientific creation stories either. Yeah. All right, this is just a multiverse. All right. People admire fault me for being too skeptical. The problem with evil. Why do we exist? Quantum mechanics is science's most precise, powerful theory of reality. It is predicted countless experiments spawn countless applications. The trouble is physicists and philosophers disagree over what it means. That is, what it says about how the world works. Any phys- physicist must probably adhere to the Copenhagen Interpretation Ban by Danish physicist Niels Bohr. This is the kind of anti-interpretation which says physicists should try to make sense of quantum mechanics. They should just shut up and calculate, says physicist David Merman once put. It. Yeah, probably. Probably. I should have a zoom in function. That would be cool. Let's try it. Ah, we gotta leave it. Can't mess with it. That'd be great, though. Just like any other show. They got the zoom in and the cut to the... Yeah, okay. What's the difference between me and Gallagher, my former friend? It's a matter of style. Gallagher scorned the choices of others who resembled one of those mean-spirited atheists who revel the faithful of their beliefs. And he... And this guy, he doesn't try to be dogmatic in any disbelief, but, um, yeah, he's a skeptic. I doubt we'll ever know whether God exists, that quantum mechanics means, and how matter makes mind. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, obviously, like, you know, you can have science experiments that sort of, I mean, take Schrodinger's cat, you know, how do you even prove that? I think they've probably done it. Let me try to find something. Oh, I got I got a comment in this. Yeah, Isaac. Thanks for... Where do you get your mineral drinks from, dude? Also, can you talk about the benefits of one glass of wine a day for the next time? Yes, definitely. Let's tackle that. 
because that that's what they say they definitely do say that um, and I'm confused where they get this you know I want to I want to figure this out with you where's the bottom of this though all right oh here we go yay definitely and I got it got it from I got the mineral drinks from Luke stories stories uh, old people say that about the wine because they want to drink <laughs> yeah yeah um, Facebook group. Yeah, old people, man. They do like to drink. My mom loves to drink. I bet she... I think it's the... the. You know, what they call it. The Greek diet, you know. Um, hmm. Okay. I'll try to find that link. I'll put that link in the show notes if anybody wants to check out that Luke Story Facebook group that has um, the great deal that I got the reverse osmosis countertop um, device for filtering my water and then the, I add the Kinton it's a big gallon usually they come in the ampules but um, yeah thanks for listening Isaac that's so cool I appreciate it we, we're definitely going to tackle some of these hard hang myths that uh, don't really know too much I forget that there's a chemical in wine osteolytes alright let's move forward to the biohack of the day let's get right to it uh. we got a great chat in the chat so if you're chatting let's chat all right so another biohacker ben greenfield sometimes i go to his blog for inspiration well i i recently got into a well a bike ride it was super good and i should pull it up i went through malibu and did the canyon through the hills of calabasas and went past malibu creek park and whew, i went up just kept climbing it was so much fun but um yeah there was there was a moment where i got to the top and i was like kind of out of breath and I said to myself is there a better way to do this and there is and this is the biohack of the day hyper oxygenation and hypoxia so you can actually train your lungs for these because I remember when I climbed Mount Wilson and on my bike and I was going up and down I was whew, and I felt dizzy you know and mainly it's because we go most of our day without thinking about breathing. So if we could be more mindful about breathing, I'm all for it. And he's got all these things. Altitude training tents, altitude chambers. You could be like Goku training in concentrated gravity. and Oxygen saturation monitor, oxygen and analyzers, um, concentrators, hypogenic generators. Um, the reservoir, but what today I want to talk about is a cheap one, altitude training masks. And this company, this is a little bit too much. This is like Rocky training for, yeah, this is the mask. I think you need the whole device, but I was looking at something a little bit, see Bane here, a little bit more functional because we definitely have to wear masks sometimes still in LA and this is the one he recommends elevation training mask this is a affiliate by him um, it's a training mask that is a breathe resistance simulates altitude and helps condition your lungs by creating in respiratory and expiratory muscle resistance and strengthening your diaphragm Making your workout seem like it's being held high in the mountains without you having to move your mountains 
or buy a fancy elevation training tent. So simply strap on the mask and begin your normal workout. And it's pretty cheap. It's called Elevation Training Mask. That's the that's the brand by trainingmask.com. And I'm not affiliate. I don't get paid. But I think I might buy one of these. It looks a little silly though. Look at this guy. The Venom Mask. Um, this one's got flames on it. I don't know. Oh, my camera just died. Let me just switch out the thing real quick. And I'm back. Thanks for waiting, guys. Okay, real quick. Talking about the aesthetics of it, that's great. But what, what's the mechanism behind it? And basically, it's a filtered inbound, outbound airflow. 99% particulate filtration. So this is like... There's like six levels of resistance on some of these. The XRT 2.0. This is the one that firefighters use. 50% rapid response on scene death. Injuries are caused from inadequate functional fitness capacity. So let's look at this one. Yeah, this one's. This one goes on like a gas mask. Which is fine. I don't know. But that's not the one we're looking for. We're looking for the cheap ones. There's $40 with the turn flow. I'm not sure if I like that as much as I like these. The Platinum Pearl Mask. Black Gold Mask. And I've seen this. UFC fighters. They, they. UFC. Breathing. Um, yeah. Breath. Training device. Eh. MMA O2 lung trainer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean these this is what I'm usually used to. Get a fight advantage with them. Yeah. So this like it's like a mouth guard. And you just hold in your teeth and I mean, this isn't the exact one, but, um, maybe it's easier with the strap around your face because I feel like it would be hard. I've seen people doing it, um, surfing or I would think that would be so hard doing it surfing, right? I can't even imagine. Let's try to find something or they would wear it out before they would go. Um, go it out, go out to the fight. Yeah. All right, we're gonna pull up this one real quick. All right. Um, I don't see any devices, but all right, training at altitude doesn't seem to improve performance. Especially with respect to physical demands of MMA. Claims of improved performance using altitude training devices are based on more claims. Altitude training improves performance, which are false and false, respectively. And training with restricted breathing devices may improve love stre lung strength and lung capacity. However, these improvements don't result in any increase in anabolic or anaerobolic uh, fitness, unless your lungs are your limiting factor. In which case, <laughs> may be the case if you have COPD or some other. Um, 
Yeah. They're saying not worth it. Yeah, it's not the same. At altitude, you're getting as much oxygen because you use a little bit of air. All right, here we go. This is a bad biohack. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe we can read a little bit more into this. Hypertoxia, high oxygen availability. It seems to be promising in recovery of injuries. Controlled studies that need to confirm that safe and effective. Thing. Okay. I'm convinced. We need more evidence. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. And then um, finally going to do that Patreon. Going to do the peptides. The the um BPC one fifty. I don't really have any more injuries, but maybe when I do I'm gonna um do the one that makes you clairvoyant and have predictive dreams. And then I'm gonna do this breathing device. We're gonna do a training montage like Rocky. It's gonna be so good. Yeah. And that's it folks. That's all I got for today. I hope you are having the time of your lives because I'm grateful. Grateful for you, Isaac. Thanks for listening. Some shout outs to you. Anybody else listening? Um, not sure if it's still live. Yeah, it's live. Yep. Doesn't say how many people are watching, but yep, this is good. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys have a great weekend or week. Just remember, be mindful. Try, try to do the things that you need to do. You know, think about your posture. All right, take care.